AI is revolutionizing the world of podcasting, unleashing amazing new tools for creators. In this episode, we'll learn how emerging technologies can help throughout the podcasting process. From streamlined research and production to multi-language distribution and data-driven monetization. Welcome to the Podcasting Secrets Show, where successful creators share their best stories, secrets, and strategies. I'm your host, Nathan Gwilliam. Hello, incurable creators. In today's episode, I'm joined by Jim Stern. Jim is the president of Target Marketing of Santa Barbara. He's the board chair emeritus of the Digital Analytics Association and the founder of the Marketing Analytics Summit. Uh, he's also written a dozen books on digital marketing, including artificial intelligence in marketing. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about AI for podcasting. Thank you so much for joining us, Jim. It's an honor to be here. Thank you so much for having me. So can you start off with sharing with us your journey um, as it specifically as it has to do with podcasting and AI? My journey is pretty straightforward. I realize that I know a lot of people in the marketing and uh, digital marketing arena and specifically marketing analytics. Knowing a lot about marketing and analytics led me into machine learning, which led me into generative AI or the chat GPT kind of AI large language models that we know now. So um, I am a proponent. I am a consumer of a vast amount of newsletters and just try to keep up. And also because I know all these people, I started a, a couple of different programs of interviewing them. Um, I didn't really want to start a podcast officially until I knew that I could do the production side. That I'm, that I'm comfortable in front of Zoom and a microphone, that I've got a good format for interviewing people. And now that I've done about 20 interviews on the uh, Marketing Live, Marketing Analytics Live Online show, and about 10 on the Data Driven Leader Studio side, um, and, I've, and I've worked out the kinks of the format, now I'm comfortable. Okay, I know how to do the, the creation, the production, the distribution, oh, okay, now, now I've got, and I'm a little queasy. So in the middle of this queasiness, along comes this amazing flood of AI tools. So uh, we are, you know, whether you're using Riverside to record or Descript to edit, or I, I mean, literally dozens of tools every day, it's now so easy Um it used to be that I would go through a transcript. I do a Zoom recording. It would automatically be fed to otter.ai, which would create a transcript. And I would go through the transcript and highlight things for my video editor to cut out. And, oh, and take this, this section where we talk about this and move it to the front and put the commercials in here. Then along comes the tools where it takes me less time to actually do it myself than to go through the transcript and instruct somebody yeah. else. So I'm saving time. I don't have to pay the third party. Um, and now, okay, great. This is working. Now it's fine time for distribution, about which I know nothing. So are there tools out there that can help me? Yes. And suddenly I've, I'm up against this interesting wall. So... I have um, started a new consulting practice of helping large companies create a strategy for adopting generative AI capabilities. I don't have a playbook. It's going to be different for every company, but I have a method for which they can create their own strategy. Terrific. One of the tenets of that, and one of the main points, the things that a company needs to do is to create an AI council of people who are dedicated to keeping track of what tools are good for what purpose to provide policies and training to the rest of the company. I feel like I am now the rest of the company. And that's how we met. I was intrigued by the fact that you can help me with distribution and that I can count on you and your company to keep track of the tools and use them. I, I really don't want to have to learn a dozen new tools, please. So if I can get um, companies that have been around for five years doing podcast recording and editing and production, that's great. But if I can come to a company that's specifically using AI tools, you can do it faster, better, cheaper. 
than the old companies can and better than I can because I don't have time to learn everything. And I love it. And it feels like everybody's kind of in the middle of that journey right now. AI is so new. We're all just kind of figuring this out. And you seem to be ahead of everybody else, which, which makes you an expert in this space. It, it amazes me because those of us who are in the middle of the bubble, uh, the one side are the data scientists who are writing the papers and, and creating the technology. And there are a couple of podcasts that I listen to to just keep track of oh, there's a new term I haven't heard before. I better go look it up just so I can stay attuned to the language. Right. And then there are the people who are really good at, at playing with this stuff and trying new things and saying, oh, did you know it can do this now? And now it can do this thing. And that's great. And I, a dozen newsletters every day with new stuff. Yep. And I am, I am, consuming all of this information and I am behind all of these people who are moving at light speed. And then I turn around and I talk to, uh, the C-suite of a large corporation. It's like, what are you guys doing with this stuff? Well, the board is asking us for our plan and, uh, it's just, it's so, it's moving so fast. We're just, we're unbalanced. We don't, we don't know what to do first. So we've got this pressure from on high to come up with a plan. It's, oh, I see the disconnect. You've got people down in the bowels of the company using these tools without any direction, without any training, but they're so powerful, nobody can resist. And headquarters is not offering any support or training or even rules or guidelines. So it's this weird thing of the technology has come uh, along so quickly and it's so powerful that everybody's using it. And yet they're not using it to the best advantage because there's nobody there to help them. So I'm embroiled in this stuff on a daily basis. And then I talk to my family and they go, oh yeah, I tried chat GPT once and it just gave me a stupid answer. So I didn't go back to it. Okay. How do I explain how to use this new technology to make it more powerful? And then comes the moment where they call me up and go, Oh, I, well, I asked it for a recipe and that was interesting. I can get that from Google. But then I asked it for their best advice for a dinner party of half of them are vegans and half of them are just vegetarians and what should I cook? And it didn't just give me recipes. It explained the difference and helped me understand. And wow, this stuff's great. It's like, uh uh-huh, I know. You just were able to ask for the right information in the right way to get the really helpful information back. It's, it's, you know, don't ask it for facts. Don't ask it for calculations. Ask it for its opinion. Ask it for its advice. Ask it to review a document and, and come up with some ideas about how to make it better. But don't ask it for, don't, don't download everything from Google Analytics, upload it into ChatGPT and say, how many people came to my website last Thursday? It'll make it up. But if you say, what's interesting in here for my CFO? What's interesting here for my CMO? What, what anomalies should I look into further? And it's great for that. Fascinating. So let's break up the life cycle of a podcast. And when we talk about a podcast here, we're not talking about audio only. We're talking about kind of these next level podcasts that the top podcasters do where, where they have audio and video and newsletters and live streams and blogs and social and all of those different components. So if someone is a, a creator and they're starting in their life cycle, so they're, they're getting ready to record their episodes. So the period of time before you record, uh, how do I best leverage AI to help me with that phase of my content creation? Um, well, step one is research. What, what are you going to talk about? Um, let's assume that you want to be topical and newsworthy. So, um, in the good old days, we set up Google alerts. Tell me when there's something interesting out there about the subject. Well, as I say, a dozen newsletters a day. I can take those newsletters and upload them and say, give me a summary of the top stories in these newsletters. So if there's a dozen newsletters and five of them cover the same story, ah, that's an important story. Now go find out some interesting facts that I can talk about or, and... 
here is my guest. Go find out interesting things about my guest. Look at their LinkedIn. Look at their their blog posts. Look what they're posting on social and tell me what they've been talking about in the last week so that I can ask them about it. Um, I want to ask this person questions about this topic. What are some good questions? Um, uh, I want to include something that's entertaining or fun about this topic. Uh, are there any fun uh, uh, what, uh, things on Twitter lately that uh, that got a lot of likes that I should be aware of? So it yeah, it's it's setting. It's not just oh, I'm going to have to slog through that every time. You can automate this process. So set up a Google Doc and have everybody on your team throw things in there when they find something interesting. And at the end of the week, put it into ChatGPT and say, create an outline that will cover these topics in some kind of logical sequence so that we're starting here and moving to there. We're, we start talking about the hardware and then the software and then the implementation and then the results and, and find stories that fit each one of those. So I'm putting together um, an outline. I don't, I don't want an actual script because... ChatGPT output sounds like ChatGPT wrote it, and you can tell. So just give me the outline, and now I've got uh, something to work on, to work with, when I introduce my guest, when we have topics to discuss, and now I'm ready to hit the record button. Yeah, and and even finding the guests, we can ask ChatGPT to help us. If I, if I want a podcasting AI expert, right, we can have have chat GPT help us identify who the best people are. Absolutely. Yeah. Just think how much that can save our time as we, we have them research the guests, find the guests, find the questions, find the bios, um, uh, and, and not just save us time, but improve the quality as it can help us identify things to even talk about that maybe we hadn't even thought. Of. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the next period of time from, for the period of time that you're recording um, and maybe editing your your episode. How can AI help? Well, recording, um, if you want to have AI participate, if you will. Um, so Zoom has a, a new AI chatbot that will listen along and you can ask it questions. I'm, I'm shy of using that because um, when I'm recording, I want to be in the conversation, not running over to the keyboard and distracted by things. But it also will do a level, of course, transcription. That's automatic these okay. days. That's been around for quite a while. But then yep. summarization. So um, it's, it's intended to be a meeting summary. Uh, at this point, these people were talking about this topic. And then at the end, here's the to-do list. Here's the next steps. And it's really interestingly good at that. It's not great. It's, it's, it's 85 to 90%, which is fine, but it, mm -hmm. it can't be taken at face value. We know this about AI. Still have to have a human review it and edit it and make it publishable. Absolutely. But the, the actual recording part for me is the least amount of automation, uh, because it's, it's all humans. It's a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then talk to me about editing. There's some cool things in editing that AI can do now where, where you can get into the transcript and see the text and you can edit the text and then it can automatically edit the videos and the audios for you. Um, exactly. I'm even hearing about somewhere you can, uh, add text in there. If I, if I introduced you wrong and, and said you were, you're part of the, you know, you'd produced a summit and I said you'd produced a, um, a challenge course or something, right? Right. It can go and change the word in the text and then it can create a, a, my voice and, and re-put it into the, the video and audio, even with my mouth saying the words. Yes. Um, and so, so not only can you edit what is said and then it will replace that, it will overdub it in your voice. It will change how your lips are moving to match those words. And now it can also translate into, I don't know how many different languages. So you can produce your podcast in multiple languages that you choose, and it will take this conversation and have both of us with the same video, but move changing them out to match the words in the different language, the same emotional content, 
in German and Spanish and Hindi and et cetera. So you're now an international speaker. Can you imagine how that is just how the game changer that that is? How right now I bet 99% of podcasts are only done in their native language, but that you take these top podcasters with all this information, you translate it into 140 different languages, and all of a sudden people in you know, Brazil that don't have access to this kind of information being published in another country, another language do. I've got a, uh, my marketing analytics summit is coming up in the middle of November in Berlin. So about three months ago, I recorded a, what I thought was humorous. I took German classes in high school and my grandparents grew up in Germany. So I have, I've got really good pronunciation. Um, grammar, yeah, that's a, that's a problem. But so I created a script and, and recorded in German that, you know, I don't really speak German, but you should come to this conference, even though I'm going to give my presentation in English. And I did it all in German. And as of two weeks ago, I didn't need to do that. I could just hit a button. Okay. Talk to me about eye contact. One of my, the biggest things that I get criticized for when I podcast is I, I like to look right at you instead of looking at the camera, or I have to look yep. at my notes to get the next question, right? And, um, and I'm not looking at the camera and it's kind of distracting to do it that way. And, um, and people are, are sometimes not as kind to me as, <laughs> as uh, I would like them to be because I'm not looking at the camera like I should be. Um, there's now AI technology that, that solves that. You want to talk a little bit about eye contact? So, so this is something that's, there was a, a, a moment in time, a historic, uh, let's call it two years, where we got used to the fact that we're on Zoom and if there's five of us, um, you can tell because my eyes are stable that I am looking at Nathan. And then somebody else talks and then I'm listening to them. And even though I'm not looking at the camera, you can tell I'm looking off, I'm looking at somebody else. And then somebody else speaks and I, oh, okay. And it's like being at the table, but what I'm, but I, I shrink my window down and I put your face right under the camera. I am not looking into the camera, which I am now. No, I'm looking at Nathan. We got used to that. Now comes AI where, yeah, I can read my script. I can look at myself and go, no, oh, I need to, <laughs> and the video will make it look like my eyes are always looking at the camera. And then we'll forget that it was ever like this and like that. <laughs> and we will expect people to always talk into the camera from now on. That's a really hard thing to do in real life. And I'm grateful for AI to help, help fix that weakness of mine. Well, it's interesting. I think the next level, haven't seen it done yet, but if we have five people and they're you know across the screen, that AI is going to figure out that when... I'm talking to person number three and looking over there. You will see me looking in the direction of that person on your screen. So that if I say, well, wait a minute, I want to ask, you can tell that I'm going to go ask Susan or Henry or somebody. Because that's the thing about real life. In the middle of you talking, I can go, and you know that I am now going to address Crystal right. over here. So sometimes we may need to turn the eye contact off. Is that what you're saying? I don't think it's turn it off. I think it's going to get smarter. Yeah, smart enough to do that on its own. Okay, that's true. Okay, let's talk about the phase of, of creating the content, publishing the content, and syndicating the content. What are the, some of the coolest things AI can do to help us in that phase? So here's the direct experience. I, I did some consulting in, uh, for an Austin firm that has launched um, the ability to create advertising for Google, Facebook, and Instagram automagically. So here's my landing page. Here's a description of the audience that I'm interested in. And it will take the, the images and the text from the landing page and create an ad in the proper format for Facebook and Instagram and Google and publish. And now I've, I'm using those platforms to do the bidding and, and how much do I want to spend per day and, and that sort of thing. But this is automatically from just a product description page, creating advertising. Now, apply that to podcast. I want to be able to push a button and say, 
okay, well, here's the audio version that goes on Spotify. Here's the version that goes on Apple. Here's the, the one that goes up on SoundCloud. And here's the video that goes up on YouTube. And uh, what's the one I saw? Opus, I don't I want to say opus.clip, but I think it's opus.pro or something. Yeah, I have it written down here, or I had it written down on a notepad. I think it's opus.us maybe or okay. opus. Dot. Where you take your hour-long video, or however long it is, and it will chop it up into little bite-sized snacks for social. It's, it's, it's probably 75% there, but it will add in the subtitles and it will make it short enough that each one is a little snack of yeah. video that will then draw people into the whole show. And here's the proper version for YouTube and here's the proper version for TikTok and et cetera. So that's the, that's the point where I am taking a step back and saying, yes, I could learn how to do all that stuff, but that's not my primary business. My business is doing the recording. And I want other people to use the, those technologies on my behalf to efficiently and effectively and inexpensively make all that magic happen for me. It is coming along so quickly. What an what a amazing opportunity for business. Um, I mean, some of these now seem so simple. Uh, one of the AI features, the very first AI feature we put into Pot Up, allowed you to start with a video or an audio file or a transcript, answer a few questions, click a button, and it writes your blog post for you. Um, I mean, I, nowadays, that seems like that's not magical anymore. That seems so basic. Um, but, but if you think about it, that's, that's so amazing. How that was probably the most time intensive part of the whole content production piece was writing the blog post. Let me, let me give you an analogy because I'm of an age where I saw the advent of computers being used in business. So I think this is the difference between learning how to write a basic program to do a calculation versus using a spreadsheet. Yeah. I don't need to know code. I don't need to plow through trying to create something that works and to see if my calculation was okay. I've got an Excel spreadsheet. I just pop in the numbers and the relationship and it gives me the answers. Yep. And that's normal now. Well, we've got a new normal. It's changed the bar, the basic standard that's there. Okay. So then let's go to the, the marketing phase. Um, how can I use AI to promote and, and grow and market my, my content, my show. The show gets chopped up into bite-sized bits. Um, uh, tweets are written, uh, LinkedIn posts are created, uh, uh, scheduling can happen. Um, this is, this is, you know, what formats do you want and what outlets are you aimed at? And let's just automate it all. Let's just say, hit the button and the word spreads. And then you get the notices back that, hey, over on this platform, this particular version of the short video is getting a lot of attention. You should go participate in that conversation. Now, do I expect that I can have my own agent participate in that conversation on my behalf? Eventually, I will have to train it carefully my tone, my frequency, um, uh, what I do want it and don't want it to talk about. So if I do a blog post or a, a podcast about a particular topic and somebody makes a comment that starts to be political, I, I don't want to participate in that. I, that's, I am not using that format and that outlet for personal opinions about politics. That's yep. not what I do. I do business. So I will be able eventually to train my agent to act on my behalf. And as long as I am transparent about it, you know, it, it's the, it's the Jim GPT is responding to you, not the Jimster. Yeah. We have a, a tool in pot up that allows you, um, to, it, it brings together all of the engagement that people are doing on all of your content from all time on all platforms, at least the ones that allow us to do a APIs and uh, puts them in one inbox. So you can easily 
um, see what, I mean, imagine me doing my show and I was publishing every day and so let's say I was syndicating to 20 different channels and then someone responds to something that I posted two months ago, right? I never would have seen that. That would have slipped through the cracks. So AI kind of bringing to the top of the surface of these are the, the comments on all of your different platforms that you need to go engage with right now. And that then becomes training data for the agent that can post on my behalf. Typically, yeah, when somebody has made this kind of comment, Jim Stern has replied in this way. Therefore, agent, follow suit. That's right. I love it. Love how it can learn. It doesn't have to do everything from scratch, but it can follow. I, you were talking a minute ago about tone, and I love that tone. You can, you can set the tone. Sometimes you want to be business professional. Sometimes you want to just be fun and, and personable, right? And I love how it, it, not, it doesn't just give you raw data, but it allows you to infuse personality into that as well. So this is one of, one of the joys of a large language model is that I can tell it what tone I want it to respond in. And ChatGPT Plus, the $20 a month version, has something called custom instructions where you can write up a, well, two parts. Part one is, who am I? So I gave it a custom instruction saying, I am Jim Stern. Here's my LinkedIn profile. Here are the books I've written. Here are the presentations that I've given. So this is what I know. So when I ask you a question about these subjects, understand that I actually know stuff about this. If I'm asking about theoretical physics, explain it to me like I'm five. And then the second part is how I want you to respond. Well, I want you to respond business professional. And then I, you know, for a while I said, respond like a, a children's birthday party clown, respond <laughs> like a stand up comedian. And it's, it's painful, but it's interesting. <laughs> and then no, let's go back to business professional. Um, and then, oh, well, I, I take it a little further. Anytime I give you a prompt, I want you to improve the prompt, make suggestions about how I might further improve the prompt and ask me three questions that I can answer in order to improve the prompt and then show me a new version of it and ask for my opinion. And we will carry on this conversation until I give you the word done and then execute. So this is now prompt engineering. I just ask it to engineer it for me. Okay, let's go to the, the last phase, the monetization phase. How can we leverage AI to make more money from our content and our shows? Well, the, the first place my mind goes is analytics. Which of my podcasts, what topics or what guests or what, um, you know, how, how emphatic I'm being or gentle I'm being or professional I'm being, um, which of my podcasts is getting the most attention? Which ones get the most response? Which ones get shared the most? And that tells me what kind of topics, this is market research. This is telling me what the audience wants. And as I grow my audience, I suddenly hit the point where now I can have sponsors. And of course, there's the, the natural call to action at the end of every podcast where you say, hey, if you enjoyed this, go you know, like and follow and, and, and. But also, here are the things that you can acquire from, you know, this is the services I offer. Here's where to go to buy from me. And let's do the analytics there. Which of the shows are getting the most people to click and follow and to purchase? And now I have this feedback loop of, oh, machine learning that says, hey, we recommend you do more shows like this and this and this for this audience and more for that audience. And when you want to sell more of this product, have your shows more in that style. Yeah. And I, I, it's, it is market research closed loop. Yeah, I love it. That, that would definitely help increase monetization. A couple other ideas that come to my mind, tell me what you think about these, um, is the creation of digital products. Let's say that I, I wanted to sell an ebook, right? I could very easily go in to, uh, to AI and, and use AI to, to create an ebook on a topic, or at least create a first draft that then I need to re read through and, and uh, make my own. Uh, another one that, that's probably a bigger revenue stream would be creating a course. Um, 
HotUp is just about to roll out an AI that will allow you to create your course. And um, you give it the outline and then it goes in it. it uh, you, you still have to record the video. It can't do the video for you, but. Oh, it will. Yeah. That will happen. So Our, I'm able to go. have that piece yet, but. It, it will. I mean, th this is, this is the thing. It's, it's like be 1994. What, what can you do on a website? Well, what can't you do? Yeah. Like we didn't know to call it web 2.0. We didn't know to call it e-commerce, but it was obvious that was going to happen. And I was one of those people that said, well, sure, you can sell books, but you can't sell shoes. People have to try them on. You can't sell cars. People need to do a test drive. Like, how wrong was I? But if you can imagine, and I can, I mean, right now, it, you can have your voice cloned. We're already seeing that right. happen. Yep. You can create an avatar that will take a script, apply your tone, match your movements with an avatar, and guess what? You just you just automated a whole show. Yep. Here, what topic? And so when when I've talked about machine learning, and, and again, my book, Artificial Intelligence and Marketing, I wrote six years ago. <laughs> it's ancient history. But even then, oh my God, it's gonna take my job. No. The human is still needed for three reasons. What problem are we trying to solve? So what topic do we want to discuss? What guests do we want to have? Uh, how, what format do we want to have? Number two, what data might be useful? So here's all of the posts that I've made. Here's all the articles I've written. Here's all the conversations I've had on LinkedIn. And then does the output, does it pass the smell test? So automate as much as you can, but absolutely positively review every word before it goes out the door. Now, if you choose the topic or the problem to solve, you choose what data is useful and you review everything, everything else can be automated. We are definitely entering into a, a new era of, of operating a business and creating content. All right, Jim, if, if our audience has enjoyed this interview like I have, they want to learn more about you and your services, what are the best ways for them to do that? Thank you for asking. Easiest way to find me is targeting.com, T-A-R-G-E-T-I-N-G. -E uh, that is my personal uh, professional location from which you can find me. And by all means, connect on LinkedIn. And thank you for sharing your time and wisdom with us today, Jim. My pleasure. Thank you. Here are my key takeaways from this episode. Number one, AI tools are advancing quickly and making podcast creation, production, distribution, and marketing much easier and more efficient. Tools can help with everything from research, outlining, transcription, editing, translation, social media, promotion, and more. Number two, AI allows for increased personalization, like customizing tone and personality and responses, or tailoring content for different audiences and platforms. Podcasters should think about how to best leverage AI for their unique needs. Number three, humans are still essential. We need to identify problems to solve, choose useful data sources, and review all AI-generated outputs before publishing. AI augments human creativity. Number four, AI and automation will continue to advance rapidly, allowing podcasters to focus on high-level thinking and quality control while letting AI handle repetitive tasks. And number five, Analytics and market research will help podcasters create more relevant, popular, and monetizable shows. AI can analyze downloads, shares, and more to optimize content creators' valuable insights into how they can best monetize their shows. If you're looking for a great all-in-one podcasting platform with 35 integrated modules, you can get a free trial at podup.com. Thanks for joining me for this episode. I wish you success as you leverage AI for your podcast.